Right, welcome back to IGTV, and we have a very special guest with us, the uh, CEO and founder of Aquis, Alistair Haynes, who's here to talk about the uh, full year earnings, profit up 27%, underlying profit up 41%, and he joins me now. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's a great pleasure. What are the details behind, what was behind that boost and the strength to those earnings? Well, 2022 was really a transformational year for Aquis. We achieved many of the milestones that we'd set. Uh, we've really diversified our revenue and we've diversified some of our products in the, in the markets business. And remember, we're made of three divisions, the Aquis Markets, the Aquis Technologies and the Aquis Stock Exchange. Yes, our, our um, revenue was up 24% uh, at £20.1 million pounds, and the profit before tax was up 27%. But the underlying profit, um, because we did a restatement of the accounts in 2021, just a move from uh, other comprehensive income, uh, a, a change, a minor change, but actually the underlying profit was up 40 uh, sorry, forty-seven percent at uh, four. Sorry, forty-one percent at uh, four point seven million pounds, and that's a pretty good achievement, I think, in a time that is really economically very, very difficult. Difficult and turbulent, as we've seen in the last few weeks with the turmoil coming out of the banking sector. Just want to focus quickly on outlook after those uh, quite impressive underlying uh, numbers. You mentioned, or Aquis mentioned, uh, that 2023, the trading continues to be in line with market expectations. But given what we've seen in the banking sector recently, given what we've seen with uh, India and Australia central banks, you know, having a having to press that pause button on interest rate uh, hikes, um, are you still holding on to this outlook? Very much so. I mean, when I look at the three divisions, the, the Aquis technolo technology business, uh, we have just introduced a 24-7 cloud-based matching system. This is revolutionary. This is really cutting edge stuff. Um, and it, it is certainly working because it changes the economics of operating an exchange. So we have, now have customers in, in uh, the Americas, in Africa, in Asia, and, and uh, as well as in Europe. And we believe that's a great, great growth opportunity. And we're very pleased with the way that's going. If I look at the Aquis Stock Exchange, although these are really, really difficult times, it's never been more important for companies, the many thousands of British companies that are out there to get scale up capital. And this is what Aquis Stock Exchange is all about. It's getting the public back into public markets as a source of capital alongside institutions in a far more progressive way than we see at any other growth market in the UK. In fact, last year we did 22 IPOs. That's more uh, than any other exchange. It makes us the largest exchange, growth exchange in the UK uh, by, by the number of uh, IPOs. So I think on that side, there's never been a more important to get scale up capital. And therefore, I think we, uh, you know, we continue to see growth. Markets business has been strong uh, because we've diversified the product. When we started this company, we were very much a lit book based on a subscription model. Now we have a lit book, we have a dark book, we have a periodic auction, we have a closing product, all of which have shown growth and all of which we believe will continue to grow for this year and the years going forward. Now, given all this, uh, Alistair, there is rising competition, you know, the next, the plus markets. Plus, you mentioned regulation. Um, and uh, Britain's financial watchdog has said it was going to start uh, work this year on price feeds, for example. Do you think uh, regulation-wise and Britain is doing enough to keep London as the preeminent financial centre? Well, I think that there is a really sort of a couple of parts to that question, which is, as a regulator ourselves, you've got to remember, we are the other recognized investment exchange to the London Stock Exchange in the UK, which can actually issue and list shares. So yes, we, you know, the, the, the growth market that, that we have there, um, we are the regulator for that market. And my belief has always been that there should be proportionate and appropriate regulation for growth businesses. I know that when we went public um, a number of years, four and a bit years ago, um, I think that, you know, I found it very expensive. I found it an awful long time. And I don't particularly get a great spread in the in, in the stock price. Um, and I think there's more effective ways and more efficient ways to do that. And that is exactly the problems that the Aquis Stock Exchange is trying to resolve. Therefore, we've got different rules, different regulations, more templating, better use of technology, faster process, cheaper, quicker, and we think better. Um, and that is really about us. I think, is the UK going to maintain its position as a major force? And the Especially answer to that is, Brexit. 
specifically after Brexit. And you read a lot in newspapers about how the market cap of Euronext is now bigger than London and that trading, more trading gets done in Amsterdam. You've got to remember that London is still a very, very dominant place in the world for financial services. And whatever metric you may choose on a particular day, it still has a very, very strong capability. It has the right infrastructure. It has the banks and the brokers and the people actually here already. Having said all of that, there is concern about losing businesses like Arm going off to NASDAQ and watching other companies now talking about going to NASDAQ and others who have moved. The problem in the United States is that you've got competition amongst the primary markets. And that competition, right the way from the 1990s, has created a form of pressure to have innovation. And the market has innovated. The market has become deep and it has become the global place to go and list stocks. What I've always argued is in London and in the United Kingdom, we must have that competition. If we force that competition into the exchange and the primary space, you will get the innovation that we desperately need as a country. So the answer to the Edinburgh reforms and what government and policymakers are looking at is I'm absolutely convinced we have an enormous opportunity in front of us as a country, but it is not a slam dunk. We are going to have to do a lot of work. There is some low-hanging fruit and things and harsh decisions that need to be made in order to keep the United Kingdom at a top level and a very, very serious place. I believe we'll do it, and I think it will happen. So, Alistair, that's the US. How about Europe? What would you say to clients, companies watching this interview uh, to dissuade them from looking at listing, for example, in Europe and listing here? Well, I think, you know, what, what you've got to do is some of the larger companies today, particularly in the tech space, so they're all going to go to NASDAQ. That is a fact. We sort of lost the unicorns. I think Europe is not just the UK. You're, you know, the, the world has lost its unicorns there. What you can do is that you need to get the money to these companies, capital, at an earlier stage in a more effective environment. And if you do that, you can grow the unicorns of tomorrow. And you know what? They will stay here. So my advice to anybody who is in Europe, anywhere else in the world is if you want earlier stage capital, then use the competitive things that are going on. You know, in this, yes, Acquis Stock Exchange is there as one of them, to go out there and get early stage capital and grow that business in a better, more appropriate environment than we see today. And many of our clients watching this uh, would love your view on the recent turmoil we've seen on the, uh, in the banking sector. Um, would you say that this uh, has got legs to run or it's just a storm in a teacup? Well, the story's not over. And there's, I mean, we've had a lot of political shenanigans going on over the last 18 months or so. This country needs to get confidence back from international players. So I think it's not just the banking crisis that people are talking about. It is a confidence thing. And I do believe that we are, again, starting to do that. Do I think there's a banking crisis coming? No, I don't. I actually think the what happened in 2007, 2008 really changed the way that we finance our banks, the capital provisions that are required. And I think, yes, you know, we're obviously called about Silicon Valley Bank, what's happened with Credit Suisse. These are issues, but I don't think they're directly related to a global banking crisis. So therefore, I think, no, the opportunity is probably brighter than people think right now. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Alistair Haynes, there, CEO and founder of Aquis, talking about the company's results. And also he says that there is no banking crisis or turmoil to come.